I'm gonna do my best to explain how difficult it is to be a car enthusiast in Hong Kong. If you're driving a modified car of any sort in Hong Kong and you pass a police officer, there's a very high chance you will get your car impounded for something as little as having aftermarket wheels. It's worse if you are driving a Japanese import. Even if it's stock, you will get harassed. How do you know they will get it here? You know, your English is very impressive. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not the guy. Despite all this, car culture in Hong Kong is bigger than it's ever been and there's nothing that can hold it back. It's been almost 10 years since I stepped foot in Hong Kong and I've always told myself I would come back to do a deep dive into the car culture. It worked out perfectly for us because a few gearheads reached out to me after they saw our Singapore Haggerty series and they wanted to show me what the modified scene was like in Hong Kong. As always, we hit the ground running with a rooftop photo shoot. Look at this scene, it's just so beautiful, it's so grand with all of these nice cars being lit by all the buildings and it's a little bit misty, it's a little bit foggy so there's kind of like this warm atmosphere of beautiful light that's kind of bathing just all the cars so I'm getting a bunch of stills. Don't know what other cars are coming, it's a bit of a surprise. It's kind of like a rolling car show right now of all these cars going up this ramp. What a wonderful day. We have this very famous 240Z in Hong Kong car culture. If you check out the plate, it actually says Devil Z. They really pride themselves in these plates. This NSX has red line as a license plate. How cool is that? So how is it that there are modified cars at all? Well, these guys that showed up to the meet are always on edge because legitimately at any time they could get their car taken away and it's normal to them. I was told that cars get impounded even if they had a DVD player or sometimes for a stock wing. I don't know about you guys, but I couldn't drive my car in fear like this. After getting some incredible shots on the rooftop, we decided to go to a very popular spot where the locals go to hang out with other car enthusiasts. How does a shooting location like this exist? Like you guys are like, eh, whatever. Well, we see it every day. Well, we come here all the time, but this is the first time we park it this way. This, oh, <laughs> by the way, this parking lot, they always call the cops. So, finger crossed. Okay.
It was good to shoot with some available light, but what I ended up doing was one of the guys brought a light wand. I didn't bring my Type S light, and we just did some super quick light painting with the Celica and also the Bayside Blue R34 GTR. Like this is quintessential Hong Kong car culture. And I'm really happy that all these guys brought out their beautiful rides. This is what it's about, just hanging out, seeing new places, meeting new people. This is car culture. <laughs> nice Richard, nice. Just to give everybody an update, we drove, I don't know, like 30 minutes to the Hong Kong side. We were actually just across there and we were shooting here with the city and everything. But now we're gonna try to get a shot from behind the city, from the hills. And somebody brought a sentry, so we're actually gonna take this up the hill and that way I can get a shot of this. But look, look how nice this is. I'm in a sentry. Talk about shooting spots. These guys know all the best shooting spots. I can't believe how far you can see here. Look at this. So I, I kind of want the 32, 33, 34. We can do that shot right now. Oh, here comes the 34. Ready? There we have it. Got the trio. 32, 33, 34. Very cool. Not bad, huh? I don't know what it is about the city. It's just so special. No matter where we go, it seems like there's so many good angles to photograph cars. I can't wait to see what we're gonna do for day two and three and four and five. Uh, I think we have to go, we have like a 30 minute time here. Okay. Cause Let's they, go. will, they will call. <laughs> we ended up shooting three episodes for this series and we followed three individuals, Eugene, Adrian, and Rocky. In this episode, we follow Adrian and the ridiculous lengths he has to go through just to enjoy his cars. We met up with Adrian and he brought out his prized RWB Porsche. There's only a couple of them in the country and it was only appropriate because there was a supercar meet that night. Adrian got a text message that said, the cops heard about the meet and they're in the area pulling everything over. Instead of risking his RWB getting impounded, he called a tow truck to take his car home while we headed over to Ocean Terminal Car Park for the meet. It turns out that BMW got towed just because of its work wheels. What's crazy is, as soon as they left, a bunch of modified cars just passed by. If they were maybe just two to three minutes earlier, they all would have gotten pulled over. Hey, if you like what you're watching, do me a favor. Go check out the Haggerty Drivers Club. 24 seven roadside assistance with flatbed towing, subscription to our award-winning magazine and more. Sign up today. Links right down here in the description. The meet itself was incredible, but it was short-lived as we got kicked out of the car park. So instead we went on a cruise. Just like Singapore, Hong Kong is very small. It's only about a hundred miles in width. In Singapore, they would drive to the airport and back as it was the longest road. In Hong Kong, they had something similar, but instead of the airport, they would drive to Disneyland and back. We met up with Adrian the next day to check out some of the local roads that he enjoys driving. 
R33 GTR and this cop's following us now. Let's we'll see what happens. Should I hide my cameras? Oh. What, is he coming? Yeah, he's coming. Oh. Oh my god. I think we're safe. So this is so cool. The guys actually brought us to their local Toge Road, which is a canyon road. It's the longest one, it's the twistiest one they have. It's pretty much the only one where enthusiasts actually come to drive. So you start at the bottom, which is right here. It's right next to this cafe where a lot of people meet up. And then you go all the way to the top and then you stop at a park. Something like this is super rare, but they enjoy the heck out of it. <laughs> it felt so good to enjoy a little bit of authentic Hong Kong food. Most tourists go to Hong Kong just for the food culture, and they're definitely not wrong. I made a point to check out the street food at one of the last remaining Dai Pai Tong restaurants. These are full-blown restaurants that are literally on a sidewalk, and more and more of them are getting closed down. There's just a few left. The next day, we had a chance to try out the complete opposite of street food, which turned out to be a 10 course feast of a tasting menu. The restaurant was called Test Kitchen and our friend Vincent owned the place. Of course, he was a big car nerd, so parked outside of his restaurant was a Toyota A86 straight out of initial D. I got in the driver's seat and drove to our next destination, which was a Tokyo style underground meet. Don't move. Damn. Damn. <laughs> hey. See you tomorrow. Oh, okay. See you tomorrow. Nice car. Four more legs. See you guys. <laughs> Do you know them? No, I have no idea who they are. Oh, okay. <laughs> legitimate underground meet here and there's just so many cool cars there's some euro there's some jdm there's some old school i'm gonna check out as many as i can i'm gonna shoot a bunch of pictures and there we go We had a chance to catch up with our buddy Rocky who arranged most of these meets for us while in town. I wanted to pick his brain a little bit about why he goes through all this trouble even though the authorities hate car culture in Hong Kong. What compels you to take on the responsibility of hosting these meets? Somebody has to do it. I think the first thing is passion. I love cars. The second thing is, I love my friends. Through these car meets, I've met hundreds and hundreds of people. Now we've become very, very good friends. I think these two are the most important factors, the passion and the people. What makes you want to share this car culture with the world? Because you guys are obviously living your best life despite mm. the challenges that mm. we've found out over the past couple of days. 
you guys are still enjoying car culture. Why do you want to share this with the world? Because I think Hong Kong can really match the world in terms of the passion and in terms of the culture and the variety. That's why I wanted to share with everyone what we've got, basically. While the underground JDM meet was fun, it was nothing compared to the largest JDM meet the country has ever seen. It was located at Sunny Bay. Oh no, oh no. Oh, oh, oh. you gotta film this, dude. You gotta film this. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Yo. As soon as we showed up, the police were already there impounding cars. They pulled over a Honda NSX-R and hounded the owner for deleting his airbag, even though the NSX-R never came with airbags to begin with. It's almost like you want to just warn the drivers to like stop where they are and just back up, up the street so they don't get pulled over. Let's see if they're gonna let this Lambo go. Oh, oh no, don't pull over the Lambo. Oh, see, okay. So they, they, they let the Lambo go, but they got the NSX. They hate JDM cars. They hate JDM cars. They hate JDM cars. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really respond so far. What, what did they ask you? Uh, they didn't really ask me anything. Because it's this car. So I just told him, well, the owner is behind me. <laughs> oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Richard, get him! Are you the guy? No, I'm just a tourist. You're a tourist. I'm a tourist. How do, you know, how do you know there's something here? Yeah. Um, we were just driving. What? We were just driving. No, I mean, how, 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 to be honest, tell me the truth. I don't really understand your question, to be honest. To be honest, how do you know they will get us together here today and you will come to take the photo for them? Or you can come to take a photo for the cars? How do you know they will get us here? Oh, your English is very impressive. Well, I'm, I'm not the guy to talk to, man. I wish I had answers for you, but I just don't. You don't, but how, how do you know you you came here today? Just like, you know, you just know. Oh my God. Ah, oh, come on, man. Don't get me on, man. Hey, hey, the problem isn't me. The problem are these illegal cars. there were well over a hundred JDM cars, a third of which were stopped by the police as they tried to get into the meet. Many of them were impounded. Despite all the police presence, people still showed up in force. They didn't even care that they were risking getting their car taken. The police took it a step further and they pretended like they were leaving, but instead they just set up a roadblock a few kilometers away at the only exit from the island. Our friend Adrian showed up this time with an R32, but he didn't even bother driving it there. He had it towed there. How ridiculous does this sound? You have to get your car towed everywhere you go because you don't want to get it impounded. Adrian takes it even a step further to drive the vehicles that he wants. There's a classic car club in Hong Kong that holds a few official meets every year. We just happened to be in Hong Kong during one of their annual gatherings, which was at a golf course. One of the main reasons why he joined the club was because they're actually very close to the Hong Kong government and they give out these moving permits that allow you to drive a left-hand drive vehicle just for a few days out of the year. These are the kind of hoops that they have to jump through just to drive these vehicles. The thing that really blows me away is that 
these individuals are not actually doing anything bad. They're not doing any takeovers. We're literally just gathering in a parking lot, just hanging out, not doing burnouts. We haven't heard one rev all day. They really, really just do not like this kind of hobby. But despite that, these guys just push on. So why can't the police just enter the parking lot and impound every single car? Well, they have to draw the line somewhere. They actually can't enter private property. So many owners just end up taking public transportation home and they left their cars all day. They either picked it up at the dead of night or the next morning. It just blows me away what great lengths these people go through just to enjoy cars. It would be so much easier if they had another hobby.